out. It's me, John Park, and welcome to John Park's workshop. Uh, thank you for stopping by today. You have been uh, listening to the soothing sounds of a bottle cap and an electromagnet. Uh, I've posted a little bit about that, but I just want to show this is one of these really great electromagnets that we've got in the Adafruit store, and I plugged it into one of these DC uh, plug adapters, and then I'm using this uh, Coma Field Kit to drive the electromagnet and to uh, use a little mixer and pick up uh, amp to uh, listen to some piezo contact mics. And then it's plugged into other stuff. Uh, but I'm really happy about these electromagnets. We have them in a few sizes, so I'm going to try them all out. What do you think of that? Uh, so, hey, I thought that the uh, theme here today of ambient would be served well by that sort of ambient music, and uh, we'll reveal more soon about the project of the week. Uh, but first, I wanted to take care of some business. So first off, we have the jobs board, the Adafruit jobs board, help wanted. So uh, this is the jobs board, jobs.adafruit.com. And it looks like we have quite a few job postings now, and you can also sign up uh, to show off your skills uh, to try to attract some work, contract work. Uh, I was scrolling through these earlier, uh, and I saw, I think it's on the second page, this one caught my eye. Uh, oh, no, it didn't. Where'd it go? There was. Something's changed. Look for this one. It says puzzle, hardware puzzle developer. There it is. I'm going to click on that. Uh, this is an escape room in Detroit called Decode... Detroit, and they're looking to hire someone to build puzzles. Check these guys out. If it'll launch. Uh, look at that. They got all these escape rooms, and they are looking to hire someone to uh, help build their puzzles. It says puzzle creation, including design, fabrication, testing, and installation, coding in Arduino, C, Rust, Python, uh, hardware design, set construction, game operations. How cool. Uh, this is not a paid advertisement for Decode Detroit, but I thought that was one of the cooler things I saw on our job board. Uh, and by the way, the job board is 100% free, so it doesn't cost anything to list jobs. Uh, it does not cost anything to list your services. So go check out the jobs board if you're looking for workers. Hire someone full-time, part-time. You can hear that wave. And we can tune the frequency with this knob. So that's jumping in 100 hertz increments, uh, or 10 hertz. We can press the button and change the waveform. There's a square wave. Get lots of harmonics in that square wave. Here's a sawtooth wave, and I like this, or rather it's a triangle. Here's the sawtooth. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was a really cool project. Uh, I have some uh, ideas of using that for some uh, Eurorack synth stuff, but I wanted to show here is, if I can find my web page, where'd you go, web page? Maybe, where'd you go? There you are. That one again. Uh, we've got, here's the, here's the product, this is the OLED Featherwing, so you can see it's got this little uh, display on it, as well as those buttons that I was pressing, which are pretty easy to read in code. Uh, and then this is Dave's uh, Learn Guide. Really cool Learn Guide. I haven't had a chance to dig into the code. I literally just got it working, moved the, the code over. There's a few different uh, Python scripts that you'll move over to your board as well as some libraries. Um, but I like the idea of customizing it. He has some great resources at the end of the guide on uh, customization. Let's see, going further rather. Uh, including adding a low-pass filter, uh, probably like a resistor capacitor low-pass filter to smooth the output, creating new and different wa waveforms, uh, and creating classes uh, for your waveforms so you can call more complex stuff, uh, as well as some other suggestions that he has. So I thought that was a really cool project and a very cool product, the OLED Featherwing. I love that thing. It's got a crisp and beautiful display. Uh, and, all right, so I'm going to See if there's any questions or comments over there in Discord land. Welcome to our chats, by the way. If you're in Discord or YouTube, I'm checking those chats out. I can't check out all the chats. So if you are over in uh, Facebook or on uh, Twitter through Periscope or Twitch, hello. Uh, and uh, come on over to Discord if you want to, if you can, if you want to join in uh, the conversation in real time. 
yeah, so let's see. Questions. Oh no, did my, uh, did my rate drop down to 144? Let's see, that was a couple minutes ago. Hmm. Buffering is becoming the norm. I heard, I wasn't able to watch the Ask an Engineer last night, but I heard there was some buffering problems there too. Is this because of net neutrality or something? Because, uh, darn it. Yeah, I've got some good bandwidth coming out of here. I checked it before the stream, so I don't know what's going on. How's it now? It's gotten better over on YouTube. All right, and stabilized. Good. Uh, what'd you miss? Yeah, someone asked, Sean Scully asked about the, uh, the little synth mis- mixer kit. That's the Coma Field kit. Um, See, Grover put a link. Um, I might do a thing about this sometime. Uh, it's, it's really cool. This is a kit. I built this one. It's largely just soldering on the pots and uh, all the SMD stuff is done for you. But this has a four-channel mixer. It's got preamps. It's got a low-frequency oscillator on it. It has a uh, control voltage controlled radio on it. So you can sweep tuning through uh, radio. It's meant for sort of uh, ambient sound generation uh, types of performances and field recordings and that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, Todd Bott says that you guys missed the part where I gave you all the free synthesizers. What a bummer. I can't believe you missed out. Sorry, Todd. All right. Uh, Hey, so now that hopefully things are more stable again, uh, let's, uh, let's do this. So, hey, that's the Make Code Minute. That's right. Uh, and for today's Make Code Minute, I'm going to pop up the overhead so you can see my little Circuit Playground Express there. Uh, and for today's Make Code Minute, I wanted to talk about looping and looping with index indices. Indexes? Let me try that again. For today's Make Code Minute, I want to talk about looping and looping with indices. So in my Make Code session here, you can see I have two different loops that are triggered by clicking either the A or the B button. And something I wanted to show off here today is in the simulator right here inside of Make Code, you can click this little button that has a snail icon on it, and it will force your code to run really slowly. And it highlights the blocks of code that are running uh, as it slowly works its way through the code. So this is a really great way to look at something that sometimes happens too fast to really appreciate. So what I'm going to do is when I click the A button, it's going to use this repeat loop. And here I've set a number of three times. So it's going to repeat whatever's inside three times, which is setting a pixel to red, waiting half a second, setting the pixel to black, and waiting half a second. It's going to do that three times. So watch as I click the A button in the simulator. So there you can see as it runs through And now it's going to run through a second time. And you can see that LED blinking in the simulator. And a third time. So that's how you can have uh, a set of code repeat itself three times. But it's going to be the same code. It's not changing. Over here on the B button, I'm using a slightly more sophisticated loop, which is this for index from 0 to a number. It's going to repeat the code inside, but it's also going to automatically increment the value of index. So I'm setting the pixel at number index, which will start out as 0, then 1, then 2. So watch when I click the B button in the simulator. It's going to run that code. So the first light lights up. Now it has internally gone to the second number, and now internally it's going to go to the third number. Uh, So that's the way you can do something more sophisticated without adding lots and lots of blocks of code. So uh, here we can see it running on the Real Circuit Playground Express. So that just blinked three times, and this time it's going to, with the B button, iterate and index uh, increase that value. And that's how you can use a repeat loop or an index loop inside of Make Code on the Circuit Playground Express. All right, uh, let's clear that thing off of there. Uh, So I wanted to, before we get to our project of the week, I wanted to do a quick uh, tool tip. And it's online recently, and some people had some questions about it. So uh, I was interested in, 
me unplug this. This is crucial for our project, so I'll need to put that back. Um, but I was interested in taking a, here we can put it somewhere we can see it against this white background, taking a USB cable and turning it into a coiled sort of phone cord style cable. Uh, I know you can buy these, but I had a lot of very plain Jane USB to micro B um, cables and I wanted to coil them. And I had remembered a project that Sean Raggin had done on Make Magazine uh, many years ago. Uh, and what it involves is taking a straight cord and coiling it take this out of here, around something that's the diameter that you want for the inside diameter of your coil. So here what I'm going to do is just wrap this cable around here and you want to get it neat and pretty tight and not whip yourself in the face with it. Uh, and then I won't do this uh, fully because we don't have enough time, but what I'm going to do is just show you the technique, which is wrap it around there pretty tightly and then you want to tie down the ends so it doesn't become uncoiled, but decide how much of it you want straight. So I would take it like that and maybe unwrap a loop or two here. And then you can either tape or zip tie those ends that are going to be free. Uh, then you'll clamp it into something. In this case, I've got a little uh, uh, pan of ice. And you'll take a heat gun and heat it up slowly for maybe like five, 10 minutes, including blowing air up on the inside of the, the brass tubing if you can, which will help it uh, heat evenly. And then once you have heated that really well for five or 10 minutes, you're gonna quench it in water. So just run it under a cold water faucet. And when you take it off, it will remember that shape. Now this one, it's gonna forget that shape because I didn't thermoform it, right? So it immediately uncoils. But with the thermoforming, you can see it remembers that shape and goes back to it uh, because we have uh, essentially heat treated it to remember that shape for the, uh, for the plastic. So that is my uh, tool tip for the week. Um, and if you have other methods or ideas on that, let me know. I've also uh, seen that there are ways to put a reverse coil in it using a drill, uh, kind of like I've used that to twist wires before. I haven't tried that on this. I'm not sure if it's possible while leaving the ends on. Uh, Sean mentioned cutting the ends off, which I didn't feel like going through. Um, but that is a, uh, a pretty cool, I think, shop tip for coiling stuff. Um, so coil all the things, right? I think we should. Uh, okay, so it is time to show the project of the week. And before I do that, I'm gonna turn down the lights. So let me, if you don't mind, run around the shop here turning off lights. And I'm gonna plug my project box back in. And let's see, two more lights. Bear with me, I know I should put these on a master controller but I haven't had the chance. All right, last lights, ready? Okay, and what I'm gonna do also is pull up a little picture in picture of my overhead. Okay, so there is a Neo Trellis and I've built that into a modified version of the Ruiz Brothers Neo Trellis uh, color game 3D model and 3D printed that. Uh, and the code I've written for this is allowing me to select the colors of the Neo pixels that are in this big orb over, over here by, ooh, by pressing the color keypad. So if I want sort of a purplish, go up to this acid green. I've got four uh, flavors of white on there. Just trying to mix in warmer, cooler, or greener versions of white. And so this is a two meter long, 120 NeoPixel strip. So that's a heck of a lot of NeoPixels. Check out this orange, I love this one. Ooh. And then red because saturation. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the lights back up a little bit. I'll go through all of those, but uh, that way you can see a little better how this thing is built. In fact, I am gonna turn on all the lights. So that, I hope you enjoyed the super saturated version because now with all these lights up, you won't be able to see it very well. Uh, 
and so the project is really about this controller, building this controller here. Um, and then, whoops, let's go to that view here. Uh, I'll talk about the lamp itself in a, in a second, but uh, here's the main um, guts of the operation. So I've got a rugged uh, on-off switch here that's actually a RGB LED uh, with um, four connections on it for, for the RG and B color. It's not a NeoPixel. I'm only using the red on this one, but just happened to be the button I have. You could uh, choose to do different colors with different states on that if you wanted to. Uh, so then taking this off, actually we'll leave that on as I take the top off. So it's this little press fit plastic. Uh, you can see we've got one of these elastomer pads. There's our NeoPixels, and now I'm going to change this camera's exposure level so you can see a little better. You can see how that blows out the lights. Uh, and let's turn that off now. So there's this little tray that's holding my uh, Neo Trellis. Pop that out. And then here is the complete set of guts. So you can see the button is gigantic, but we've got plenty of space in here. Uh, and then I have the Feather M4, and some of these uh, I have wired by soldering them directly to the board, and then I have uh, connector cables. I really like to have interconnects that allow me to plug everything in or out as I'm putting the thing together. Um, I'm using a DC barrel jack uh, for the power, so that's a 5 volt, 2 amp power supply there. Uh, I'm using the USB plug that's just part of our um, uh, feather with the USB cable there providing power or to program it. Uh, and then you'll see, I'm going to raise this up and hopefully it'll focus. Right here I've soldered a little uh, three position screw terminal onto the prototyping area of the feather wing or the feather rather. And so what I have going into that are the ground and power from the 5 volt 2 amp wall supply. Uh, and then I'm grounding that to the board. Then I have this cable here. This is a USB cable that I stripped one end of. And so I have the data pin coming from pin 5 of the feather running up the green wire of this USB cable. And then the power and ground also running up that. So that's actually what's going to my lamp. So let me zoom out here for a second. I'm going to bring the lamp over here so we can look at it. And I'm actually going to take the guts out of it. So I have some split loom tubing just so we could have this kind of umbilicus effect here. So I've run about a meter of the um, NeoPixels through there. And then this is a lamp I built that was like $30 at Ikea. Um, it's a really great design for diffusing stuff. Uh, it's just a thin plastic and you get to put together uh, using sort of rubber bands, almost like hair bands. I'll show you a little more about that in a second. Um, but I was just on the prowl for a really good diffuser and, and I thought that was great. But you can use this controller box for any kind of project you want. Uh, and let me, uh, let me straighten this out and I'm going to zoom in again. So the, whoa, one of the challenges I said, I'm always trying to figure out a good connector and I actually called up uh, my friend Todd, Kurt, Toddbot in the chat there yesterday to ask him about various connector ideas um, and things he'd used in the past for getting some distance between the microcontroller and the NeoPixels, what's got, you know, kind of a high, high enough current rating to deal with it. Uh, is maybe an easy connector to work with. And we were throwing out a bunch of ideas, but we came up with what about using USB? So these USB cables I think are rated for maybe an amp or more. Uh, and I've just used one of our Adafruit female USB to terminal, screw terminals here. And I've got the three wires of the NeoPixel, uh, you know, checked with a continuity tester to make sure I got everything right before I plugged it in. Uh, but I'm essentially just using three wires of the USB. Uh, and I suppose you could use the two remaining ones for some redundancy if you wanted to, to sort of double up your um, 
available uh, or lower your resistance or double up your available uh, current that you can push through the thing. Um, and so I thought that was a pretty elegant solution for dealing with this problem of how am I going to connect these NeoPixels that are far away. Um, so originally I had thought, and, and this was why I had contacted Todd, because I was thinking about um, what about using a um, stereo cable, like a TRS three position audio cable. Um, and he said, no, I think the current rating is way too low and the resistance is too high. So you're going to get like six volts of current drop or something across it, which is no good. Um, so this is always sort of an interesting uh, part of the challenge is coming up with things that you can uh, use to extend your, um, your connection. And hopefully it's something that is readily available. So I've also used Ethernet cable or Cat5 cable for that sort of thing before, but I thought this one was a, it was a pretty neat use. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see here with all these... Uh, connector cables, it's pretty easy to put things back together. So if I plug in, we've got this four position connector on the NeoPixels. What's up? This way is up or forward. Uh, I forget my tray. Where'd the little tray go? Pop this tray through here and get the wires out of the way. Pop in the trellis or Neo trellis. And this is a really cool design by the Ruiz brothers. It's a, it's a really nice uh, way to build a project using the uh, Neo Trellis and kind of whatever you can put on the inside. Uh, and let me switch cameras for you. Did I guess right? Yes and yes. There we go. Uh, so now we'll plug in DC power and USB. And then I'm going to turn on the little switch in the front there. Oh, there we go. Uh, and you can see it's super bright, so you can't really see the colors too well now. Uh, now, I was talking about these uh, lamp panels. So this is how this comes. And again, you could use this for anything. I'm not uh, saying go out and buy an Ikea lamp if you don't want to or don't need to. Uh, but this is made up of these um, identical panels. And you can see here, I'm going to hold it close just because we're uh, the lights are up and it's a little bright, but you can see here it just diffuses really nicely. We don't see individual dots even at maybe an inch and a half away. Uh, you can sort of see the dots now. And so these go together uh, just by lining up these little tabs and then running uh, what is this? essentially a hairband. My daughter asked, why is it such an ugly color? They shows this kind of beige color. I do not know. I asked her if I could borrow some of her hair bands, and she said, uh, only if I can have them back. And I said, you know what? I think I'll just use the, the ones that came with the thing. And there you go. So I actually, if you look on um, the Instagram and, and uh, Twitter accounts, I published something the other day where I just made half the lamp. So. I, you can build just four, I think there's eight panels total, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, you can take just four of them and they'll, they'll reach across and make more of a uh, oblong shape. Um, but once you've put those together, I just sort of hung the lights in there. You don't have to be all that precise about it. Uh, and you can see I had it running with the uh, USB cable coming from across the table. So there we have now the ability to change up that color. Uh, and then I just wanted to show you, I'll leave that like that, I want to show you the um, part of the code and show you kind of how easy this is to program. So I'm going to pop over here for a second. Okay, so here's Adam. Boy, look at that thing. It's kind of bright back there. Uh, and if you'll notice inside of uh, my circuit Python code, I've defined a bunch of colors. And so I'm just assigning those to the NeoPixels as well as the Neo Trellis. So they're using the same set of colors. Um, and this is the cool part. You don't have to do that much. The library is written so that if we just ask for, has an event edge occurred? Has something changed with one of the Neo Trellis buttons? Uh, such as the edge rising, I think that's when it's been pressed, or the edge falling, that's when it's been released. You just insert what code you want to occur in there, and that's about it. Everything else is taken care of just by this simple bit of code. So what I'm saying is 
the trellis pixel that is the event number. So when you press one, it knows, uh, the code knows which number button, zero through 15. Uh, I'm then setting the color to be uh, equal to that in an index plus 16, because I made my, my list have um, the dimmer colors. So when I press, they dim. Uh, and then when I release, it will um, reverse the fade, is what I'm calling it, which is just draw on the pixels from the top down. So it turns them off quickly from the bottom up, and then more slowly, uh, turns on the NeoPixels. And uh, that is about it. I mean, it's very, very simple, uh, other than some code that turns on the, the lights at the beginning. Uh, those are all the things that are defined, and then the, the main loop that's running is just this trellis sync thing, and a little bit of a sleep so that it can um, uh, not run too fast. So let's see. Any questions about that? That's... Um, yeah, I know the Neo Trellis is new and there's not a lot of projects using it. It might not be in stock right now, but uh, I love it because I, I really liked the Trellis before, but a couple downsides. You had to solder all 16 LEDs into it, which is fun the first five times, but then it gets a little old. Uh, and you had to pick a color. You, didn't, uh, you couldn't do multicolored things. So with this, the ability to have um, responsive uh, color as well as blinking. I think the trellis might have only been on off. I don't even think we could PWM uh, the brightness of them. So um, someone asked about the name of the lamp. Wow, that is such an excellent question. And I think I left the box somewhere else, so I don't know. But um, I know that Katni used a small version of that lamp for one of her projects. So let's look real quick. Uh, let me switch you over to this view here, this is how I would find out. Uh, oh, I can't be shopping for, I gotta be in learn. Come back, learn. Can you search by name there? I think you can. No, oh, I found her. All right, so pick the author and then this was, there you go. Hacking Ikea lamps with Circuit Playground Express. Oh, I think someone's going to beat me to it. Skiopena. That's what it's called. Skiopena. There's, there it is without all the cool um, umlauts over the O. So uh, it comes in a bunch of different sizes. I chose this 17-inch uh, one, which is $30. There's some of the cheaper ones are 15 bucks or 20 bucks. Um, but it's a really cool diffusing material. You might be able to find something like that uh, material just in sheets and make your own designs, I'm sure you can, but uh, this was very quick and easy, so uh, I went with that. So, uh, let's see. I think we are just about out of time, so I'm gonna just look around in the chats for a second here to see if there's any other questions I can answer while we're on the air, uh, and otherwise, I'm gonna hang out in the chat for a little bit over on uh, Discord if you wanna uh, ask any other questions or just chat in general. Uh, let's see. Questions? Questions? Uh, I'm going to check the YouTube questions because I can't really answer those after the chat. They tend to disappear. Here, I'll move this this way so you're not looking at me sideways. Uh, hello, Spain. Charging coils. Does it do patterns? Uh, that's probably about this. I did not. So I made this just be sort of an ambient color picker. If you just want the color in a room, especially with the lights down, to be uh, one of those colors that I've, that I've uh, designed on there or chosen on there. Um, but you can see I couldn't resist getting slightly fancy and having them fade on and off. You could certainly um, do anything you want. You could use fancy LED. Uh, you could use, um, just write your own, use like kind of rainbow and, and other sort of default pattern kinds of things. Uh, it would look very cool, I'm sure. And you can run those on the Neo Trellis as well. So you could uh, just have kind of a random thing, hit any button and something crazy happens. That would be a lot of fun. Um, let's see, what else? Other questions? Yes, a music output. I think uh, that would be a terrific music output. In fact, the image or the little video that I put up on uh, YouTube and, and the social media yesterday, I had the sort of half size one of those sitting on top of a little MIDI keyboard. So it probably 
um, suggested that I was doing something with sound, but I, I have not. But yeah, you could totally do sound reactive stuff with it. I think that would be terrific. Uh, let's see, what else? Anything going on in the Discord? I'm going to turn that on here. And what am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anything today? I feel like I've forgotten something today. You know what? We'll, uh, we'll jump back to that coupon code. That was one thing I was going to forget. So don't forget today you can get 10% off in the store if you use the coupon code AMBIENT, which is our theme of the day. Uh, quick re- recap, what did we talk about today? We had our uh, OLED as the, uh, the OLED Featherwing as the uh, product of the week. We had our make code looping and cool snail mode. So that's definitely a helpful thing if you're, if you're trying to explain or just look at how your code is working. Uh, we had the tool tip on coiling a cable and then our project. So uh, I think that does it. I'm going to be writing up a guide for this and that'll be out tomorrow if you're interested in building your own uh, ambient color control pad. You can use it to light up anything you want, and it doesn't just have to be NeoPixel strips. You could do NeoPixel rings, individual NeoPixels, uh, the ne- little NeoPixel boards, any, anything where you want to light up NeoPixels and pick the color just by looking at the color, which I think is a, a very nice interface for it. So uh, that'll do it for me. I'm John Park, and this has been John Park's Workshop, and I'll see you next week.